Hey guys, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I am going to show you the newest and biggest thing that Photoshop has done uh, since I can't remember. I mean, it's, it's introducing AI into Photoshop for the first time. Rather than telling you, let me just show you. It's Photoshop beta, but what you can do is you can go into the, your Creative Cloud account and right here in Photoshop beta, just click it and it'll come up. What I'm going to do is we're going to take this dog here and we're going to place the dog on a different background. We Let's say a, a beach or a park or whatever. Before we do that, let me get rid of this leash here. We'll use the new remove tool. Now, if you don't see the remove tool, okay, which I don't see here, what you can do is go into edit toolbar and You'll probably see it here because it exists in the new version. So we're going to put it into this spot healing, healing brush. So let's just bring it over to here and click done. So now we have the remove tool. I'll press the right bracket key on my keyboard to enlarge it. A brush over it. Bam. It keeps the tail. So I'm just going to get rid of this over here. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our lasso tool and I'm just going to draw a very loose selection around the dog. I don't have to be exact. So now we have a selection, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to invert the selection by uh, pressing Control or Command Shift I. We don't see the contextual taskbar. So if you don't see it, go into window and contextual taskbar. It's normally checked by default, but in this case, I purposely didn't to show you where you can find it. Just click it and there it is. We can move the taskbar around by clicking this little uh, vertical bar here and we can move it all around if we want. Now in this case, we want to replace the existing background around the dog with a different background. We'll pick a park. So I'm just going to put park, park with trees. How's that? Yeah, and you don't have to get very uh, detailed, like with Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion or even Leonardo.ai. You could just just type in. You don't have to type in verbs. You don't have to really get that exact with it. And then just click generate. I might speed this up. We'll see. This is really cool. Wait until you see it. It's going to give us three options. Now here we have a park with trees. So we could, that's this one over here, variations. We can do this one over here or this one over here. Frankly, I like them all. Let's do this one. I like this one. And by the way, if you like this one, you can generate more based on this by just clicking generate and it'll generate more for us to see. Notice it keeps the depth of field in the background, just like in the original photo. All right, so here is, if we scroll down over here, we can see different variations of this. But I like the first one, so I'm gonna pick that. Now here's a layer. What it did was it created a layer mask of the dog that we created with the selection. I'm going to make a composite snapshot of this by pressing Control Shift Alt E. All right, or on a Mac, Command Shift Option E. And then we have a composite snapshot. So let's say I want uh, a puddle under the dog. With my lasso tool, I'm just going to make a lasso around the dog where I want to see the puddle. I click Generative Fill, type in puddle. Now watch this. Generate. And it's taking its time because it's using artificial intelligence. And by the way, you have to be on the internet because that's what it's using right now to access everything. Look at that. <laughs> it has the reflections of the dog in the puddle. Let's say I like this and I want to generate more Want to see what else it can do here. Okay, so we got we got these now. 
I like this one. I like this one better. It's the most natural. I love that AI put like a little, um, you know, kind of like a ripple under the uh, paw there. Unbelievable. So he went, you know, from this to that. So let's go to another one. This is going to friggin' blow your mind. Let's say you have a, a photo and it's cropped and you want to, you know, boy, you'd say, I'd really love to make this into a wider photograph. So what you do is you go into your crop tool. Okay. And basically, let me just, let me go into original ratio clear. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand it out to about this far. All right. And then I'll click the check mark at the top. So then I'm going to take my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to go around the empty area and make sure you uh, bring a little bit of the photograph in it because it has to reference the photo. And just click generative fill to generate. There you go. We got this one, we got that one, and we got that one. I like the first one. I'm going to use that, no problem. I'm going to merge these two by pressing Control or Command E. I could have kept the original and, and made a composite snapshot, but this is faster. You know how to do that, so no problem on there. I'm going to go back to the crop tool. I'm going to bring it out this way. Let's really make it a uh, panoramic uh, photo here. Go into the rectangular marquee tool, bring it in there, and just generate fill, generate. So I like this. That's nice too. I like this one. I'll merge them. What I'm going to do is replace the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my crop tool, move it up about eh, this much. That's fine. Go into my rectangular marquee tool, bring it down. I'm not even going to like, this is fine. Before this, as you know, we had sky replacement, which is great. Um, and you, because you can be very specific with, with the sky and really, get, but this is a really quick way of, um, of doing this. If you just want a generic sky, but it gives you choices on this thing. So generate. Bam. These are the variations on it. I'm going to click this one. I like that one. I'm going to merge it. The reason I'm doing this is I want to show you when we add the water under it, it's going to reflect the trees and the clouds. So I'm going to go into the crop tool. I'm going to move the contextual task bar. I'm going to extend it down. All right. Click the check mark at the top. Go into the rectangular marquee tool. Extend it up a little bit in the generative fill lake. That's all I have to do. Generate. There you go. Look at this. It's got like blue sky. You can see it, which is really nice. That's really nice too. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to generate more. Yeah, I like this one. Notice the reflections on it. It's really, really cool. And if we wanted to add like a... All right, let's do it. Let me merge this. I'm going to make another copy of it by pressing Control or Command J, just so I have the original intact. And I want to add a, uh, a sailboat in here. Okay. So, sailboat. Oh, and you really have to be careful how you, the spelling's got to be correct. That's a weird looking, uh, there we go. And look what it did. I mean, it's crazy. It reflections in the water, it goes up here, it cuts the, I mean, it's really mind blowing. Let's go to one last example here. Let's say we want to replace the laptop with, I don't know, a vase. Go into the lasso tool. I'm going to put vase and generate. 
It's going to replace the laptop with the vase, and it's going to replicate the light and the shadows. It's analyzing the photograph. Look at that. Now, if we don't like that, check this out. It's cutting it out. It's doing its thing. It's figuring out like what would be through the window. This is really nice. I like this. And look at this. You're getting a caustic shadow. It includes the uh, light going through a transparent or a translucent object, creating a highlight. But it's creating a, a reflection in the table as well as a shadow. And it's a caustic shadow. So, yeah, this is just a taste of what it can do. And um, just have fun with it. And I'll keep you posted with new stuff. And there's a whole lot of new stuff coming up that I want to show you about as well. So... Take care, be safe, and I love you guys. Thank you.